What's going on YouTube? West Hobbies RC. So today we are back with the Blade Fusion 180 Smart. And of course, if you guys know me, we have a Micro Heli three bladed head conversion kit. So we also got a new Micro Heli canopy. Awesome, awesome quality. Colors are great. My only complaint so far with the Fusion 180 Smart is just the color choice of the canopy. I like the colors. I think they look great, but it is extremely hard to see, especially on a grayer day when it's not so sunny. Very hard to see canopy. So we took care of that problem. Huge thank you to Microheli for sending me the canopy and the all three bladed head. So this is for the Blade Fusion 180 and Fusion 180 Smart. So we are going to get this blade head assembled. So of course, just like everything, get your head block, your feathering shafts, your head dampeners, washers, all aluminum, uh, swash plate, blade grips, links, and I went with the yellow main blade. So let's get everything out of the package. Let's get the camera on a tripod and let's start tearing this thing down. All right, so we went ahead and laid all the parts out. Of course, we have our tools here. All we need is a 1.5 millimeter driver to take the stock head off. We need a number two, a good Phillips. You need a good Phillips. And that is for everything I, we're gonna be putting together on the micro heli head is a Phillips. And then of course, just little set of ball link pliers. If those give a hard time popping. And of course, Loctite 243s, Loctite I recommend. So what do we have here? We have our blades, of course. Now, these blades are narrow blades. They're a very narrow blade, especially when you compare them to stock. So, a little worried about that. I have yet to try blades like this that are this narrow, but they are smaller. These are 150 millimeter blades versus the 180 because we're going from two blades to three, so we go smaller. But the nice thing with this being a belt driven tail is we can run bigger blades and adjust tail to compensate. So, we're going to play with that too, but we're going to fly it stock out of the kit. We have our 3D printed arms. Nice CNC aluminum head block, all aluminum blade grips that come preloaded, meaning the bearings, washers, everything are already inside. And then we've kept three of them, of course. We have our beautiful aluminum swash plate that is just incredible quality. We have our head dampeners, our brass washers, and our feathering shafts. And then we have a motor pinion. So now, these pinions on this motor are pressed on. So in order to get this pinion off, you have to have a little pinion puller that goes around and pulls the pinion. I did check this is a 11 tooth pinion, and this is a 10 tooth pinion. So this is dropping down one tooth. I am not going to install the included pinion. Uh, I'm gonna try it with the 11 tooth pinion for now, give a little bit more head speed but we can always switch over to the 11 tooth later. So let's get the camera on a tripod and let's start this assembly. So first things first, let's go ahead and get the old head off the helicopter. I'm sure you could probably grab and twist these off. I'm just gonna use a pair of ball link pliers real carefully and just pop them forward. Do all three of them that way. And then once you get your links off, you want to get the top head off see now this one's giving us a problem so let's try it this way sorry guys go ahead pull your anti-rotation bracket off it is going to be one one and a half millimeter screw right here let you get to the back and then your ball link pliers will definitely come in handy here go ahead and pop this off okay and now our swash plate is loose you're gonna have one 1.5 millimeter bolt and it's going to be right here your Jesus bolt, head bolt, whatever you want to call it. Go ahead and unscrew that. And then you'll be able to lift the entire head assembly, swash plate, everything, right off the helicopter. Unthread it all the way. And now we're going to set this little bolt aside because we're not going to need it with the new head. And then go ahead, grab your helicopter, carefully Hold the main gear, twist side to side, and it should all come apart like that. So now we can take our stock head assembly and set it aside, and now let's assemble the three-bladed head. All right, first thing we're gonna do is grab our head block. 
there's going to be one 1.5 millimeter screw in the middle. Now, not only does this hold your button on, but it actually is what holds the head block halves. So set that guy aside, and then your top half of the head block is going to fall out. Set that aside. So now we are going to insert the feathering shafts. Now, when you insert the feathering shafts, take the screws out first. I'm going to do that, and then we'll start inserting them. All right, we have the screws out of the feathering shafts. Uh, they are a one Phillips or a double O. They're a double zero Phillips. So make sure that you have a double zero for those screws. So now the first thing we're going to do is insert the feathering shaft into the head block. Okay, it's going to be loose and wiggly. Hold your finger on it. Grab two of these head dampeners. There's two of them. Do one at a time. So you're going to start with one slide it on get that dampener push the feathering shaft back a little bit slide the next one on be careful when doing this you don't need hulk pressure okay now we got both of the dampeners pushed flushed and then now we are going to take the shaft and now this is a very important part too is the way the shaft is put all right turn it 90 degrees flat side down and down Pull it and turn it 90 again. Okay, so you see the 90 on it, the way it's sitting in there. Now go ahead, grab your next feathering shaft, do the same thing, drop it down, use your fingernail to hold it, grab yourself two head dampeners, one first, get it started, push the feathering shaft back a little bit, grab the next one, get it started, and then hold the head block and push to where the head dampeners are flat. Twist the feathering shaft so it is 90 and pull it down till it sits into place. See, it is tightly pushed into the little holder there. And then this head button here, this little square, is going to sit and stop these feathering shafts from ever moving. Now, when you are assembling or de like disassembling the head, it is very important that you take the dampeners out first. If you don't take the dampeners out first, you're gonna have a hard time getting these feathering shafts out. One, and two, push it into place. Now, twist that so it's facing this way. Flat side, there's going to be a long flat side and a short flat side. You don't want the short flat side up. You want the long flat side up. Pull it till it's tight. Okay, so now we can go ahead, take our head button here. And this is the little hex that I was talking about. You guys can... Nope, it fell out. This little hex. So now you are going to drop the hex down in it. Flat side towards the bottom. So use you a little driver, whatever you need. It's going to sit down in there like that. And you'll notice the flat sides go towards the feathering shafts. Take your head topper, head block top, stopper, whatever they call it, second part of the head block, and push it down. Now make sure that it seats so now this little head block is clear or keyed. This little guy. So this little guy fits into here only one way. There we go. And you want that's very important. So do it upside down. There we go. Now it's sitting flat and flush. You see how it's flush here? Take your screw. You guys already know, dab a Loctite. Now the reason I like 243 over 242 is because it is, 242 is very picky. Screws have to be 100% clean. Of course, always clean your screws, but 243 doesn't care. So now our head block and feathering shaft assembly is assembled. So now let's go ahead and start throwing the blade grips off. So let's move some of these tools out of the way. We are going to go ahead and get our number double zero Phillips ready. 
We are gonna go ahead and get a dab of Loctite, and you don't need much, just a dab. That little dab. I know it's hard to see. It's all you need. So now you're gonna grab a blade grip, okay? And then flat side up with the precision. Slide it in nice and gently. Take your screw. Run the screw down, tighten it up. You want these to be tight. And when you tighten them all the way up, your blade grips should be free and smooth. No binding, no gritting, no nothing. Okay, now go ahead. Oh, I screwed up. Oh, look at that, I screwed up big time. Dumb, dumb moment there. Before you put your blade grip on, don't be dumb like me. Get you a little copper washer, flat side towards the head block. I was wondering why there was play there. Now, so copper washer, now slide your blade grip. Okay, another little dab of Loctite. We can just touch the excess because that's all that we need. You don't want so much Loctite that when you go to screw these down that the Loctite pushes out and gets into the bearings. That's how you will get a gritty, notchy bearing. On some helicopters, I even like to... All right, still free, smooth. A little tighter now, which is good. No play. All right, so now let's do the other two. All right, so now that we have the head completely assembled, everything is Loctited, spins freely. We're gonna go ahead, pull that bottom screw out, number two Phillips. We're gonna set this guy aside. And now we are going to grab our little plastic arms. So we have these little arms right here. There's a screw through each of them, a number double zero. Go ahead, pull these screws out. I'm gonna do that real quick and then we'll get them thrown on the head. All right, so we have the screws backed almost all the way out so they're flush on the inside, no hanging. This is plastic, so no need for Loctite. So the way that these arms go is flat side. See how flat that is? See the indent there? Flat side is going to go towards the blade grip. So you're gonna want these arms to be on here to where they are put towards the inside of the, so they're all facing inward. So go ahead, move your blade grip up and run this screw down. Get it in here to where you can, I hope you guys are seeing this. Okay, so go ahead and screw this in to where it goes through the brass insert on the inside of the blade grip. Just like that, screw it all the way down until it is tight, but not too tight. Like that right there is a little too tight. So let's back the screw off just a little bit. And I'm happy with that. So now again, we want it to face inward. So now let's go ahead and get the other three done and let's get ready to throw it on a swash plate. So once you have all of your arms put together, it should look like this. Well, all of your arms are facing inward, which is what you want. You want them all facing in. Now we can grab our swash plate and we're gonna go ahead and assemble this with swash plate on the helicopter first. So now this is a brand new helicopter. There is still some grease on there, but if it was a older helicopter, I would recommend putting a little grease and I'm still gonna put some grease on when I am done. Let's go ahead and do the back one first, just because that's where we are. Grab your aileron, your pitch. Okay, make sure everything is nice and smooth and free. Okay, now let's grab our head. What did I do with it? Here you are, head. And we're gonna put the blade grips up, put everything up, line up your hole. So now remember, threads are on this side, holes over here. Slide this down till our hole lines up. Now grab your number two Phillips. 
And of course, Loctite. Let's put a dab of Loctite on this screw real quick. So as you can see, just a dab. And slide this through without moving the head like we just did. There we go. All right, run the screw down and tighten it up. Where'd you go? There we go. Now tighten this up good. Now we're gonna rotate your arms down and each arm is going to fit on the swash plate like this. So this arm is going to go to this ball. Now, it doesn't matter which ball goes on, you know, each direction. They're all going to be the same. Down, and then your last one. So now, our head assembly is on. Of course, we need to put the anti-rotation bracket back on now. But now our head assembly is on, so let's put the anti-rotation bracket on, and let's throw the blades on it. All right, so three blade head is a done, assembled. Everything is Loctited. Anti-rotation bracket is back on. So now the only thing left to do is fly it. So the little skinnier blades do worry me a little bit because I mean, they are very skinny. But with having three of them, we'll see how it reacts. I would like to play with different blades in the future after we get some flights in on the micro heli head configuration but it does look good. I just love three-bladed head helicopters. I really wish that Microheli made some brighter tail blades. Maybe we can get some of those because I want yellow tail blades to match the yellow main blades and it would really brighten the tail of the helicopter up, but that three-bladed head just looks like it should. That's the way this helicopter is supposed to look. Three blades, at least for me. I love three blades. But let's go ahead and throw the canopy on and let's get a completed look and see what it looks like now. All right, look at that. So much better. The canopy looks incredible. Huge thank you and shout out to Microheli. Guys, this stuff will be linked in the description below. If you want the three bladed head, if you want the canopy or any other Microheli upgrades, check them out, check their website out. They make all kinds of upgrades and this just looks incredible. I really like the yellow blades with the yellow and the green in the canopy. I think it goes together really well. A little yellow on top, the green goes with that and the, or the yellow goes with that in the green. Awesome. Now we just need a brighter tail blade and this thing will be a perfect color combination. I mean, you can definitely tell, of course, fiberglass canopy plastic canopy but look at the color difference that is going to make a huge difference and the bright green rotor head going to make a huge difference so i want to thank you guys so much for watching if this video was helpful give it a like subscribe and i did break my anti-rotation bracket so we can't fly till i get a new one that was my stupidity take it off that was my fault but we order a new one tonight that's not a big deal give the video a like Subscribe, take care, and have a great day.